On today's episode of Watch JR Go, we're probably buying a Hyundai Veloster. What is going on guys? I'm Watch JR Go and today we're out in the vault and we're headed to look at a 2012 Hyundai Veloster. And I found this on Facebook, it was listed for $2,000. I talked to them for a bit, they were like, eh, we really just need $1,500 and it has a blown engine. So I was about that. I was like, all right, when can we check it out? They said, now we're on the way. I've looked up the engines for that thing and it seems like you can reliably get an engine with a warranty for $1,000. So if I can buy the car for $1,500, put an engine in it for $1,000, change the oil for 50 bucks, call it done and get it down the road, I think there's a lot of profit in this car. So let's go see what happens. Well, here we are, a place called Pristine Automotive here in Wichita. A couple cool cars out here. Lexus IS350 and a Platinum F150. Love those Platinums. Let's get inside and check it out. Also, people always ask if it's really happening like this. There's 1420s. Of course, I'll have to go find them another $100 bill to uh, make this happen. It starts, it just definitely sounds like it has an empty problem. <laughs> All right, let's try this out. Whoa, is it light? Sweet. Oh yeah, I put the seat all the way back. I was listening to music laying in here. <laughs> uh, wow, it's got the uh, Denison system. I don't even know what that means. Uh, let's see. When it comes on. Yeah, that's right. Oh, it's just the Veloster one, not the Denison. Okay. <laughs> well, let's see what's up with this. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is bad. Station channel. <laughs> Not the worst. You could probably drive this. It'd be fine. I did. I drove it over here, but I kept the RPMs like super really low. low. Yeah, I coasted. Gotcha. Hey, ain't no worries. <laughs> <laughs> Coasting along. All right, let's pop this thing. How'd the bumper come off too? Um, it needs Just like a little clip. Clip. Gotcha. I like. I didn't like hit a curve. I caressed it. Ah. Uh, <laughs> sometimes you have to caress those curves. <laughs> Is there a big oil leak under it or anything? Or is it mm -mm. still fat? There is no oil leaks or anything. Okay. That's what I thought, is how like, you break engines. I have another friend that works at, what's it called? Like the actual Hyundai, like. The dealership? Yeah. I took it to Nate and he said that like, this car rarely has problems like that. Well. The oil is milky, so we might have a head gasket issue. I think this engine's coming out no matter what. And just like that, I own a Hyundai Veloster. I'm kind of excited about this one because it has that big center screen for the infotainment. I went and snagged my brother's truck. We've got a trailer and we are on our way to hook this Veloster. We'll pick it back up when I load this thing on the trailer. We're gonna drive it on the trailer and we're gonna drive it off the trailer, but I think that's about as much life as we're gonna get out of this engine. Even though I heard that uh, the last owner had to drive it all the way to that shop, which was a massive drive. And uh, they just babied it there and it made it. That's honestly, it's one tough engine Hyundai for being down a cylinder with a broken rod and making it that far. Not bad. I'm also sure a lot of you guys are like, why don't you have your own truck? Well, it's simple. I want just a few trucks. I want a one ton because we pull a lot of really big trailers. And of course it needs to be a dually with a diesel. So uh, that's a tall order right there, especially loaded. And I'd like to have a Raptor for a daily slash pull trailers around uh, when you're just moving lightweight cars. And uh, of course the Raptor is also a tall order. So it'll be a while before I buy a truck. Uh, I don't think we're gonna rebuild a salvage Raptor or anything like that. We're just gonna find one that works and go from there. Luckily for now, I've got a few people with trucks that let me borrow them. The Veloster is loaded up and ready to go home. I've got it strapped down. There's only two straps on it because we're only going through the city. Low speed stuff. And uh, as long as there's no tornadoes, I think we'll be okay. So uh, we drove it right on as I expected. And that one tire is still completely flat. So it's either like off the beat or has a gigantic hole in it or they didn't air it up. I'm not sure what happened there. Either way, I guess we'll figure it out when we get the car off the trailer. Look at that, it's got a Veloster tag frame and a backup camera. I'm excited about the options this car has. There's your first look at it. You need to pull the fender out right there. And there's a couple other dents, lots of PDR and lots of cleaning to be done. But after that, I think it's gonna be a very reasonable car. Hey, the headlights don't even need done. That's a big bonus right there. All right, we finally have some time to check this thing out. This is my 2012 Hyundai Veloster base 
four cylinder, four valves, 138 horsepower, 123 foot pounds of torque. Let's get in here. I don't have the remote for it. That's on the to-do list here. You can see it's like a base model with cloth seats, but has Veloster etching in the seats. It, uh, it smells a little bit like cigarettes, but not heavily, so that's good. Uh, it has a DCT, which is super cool. I hear it's a six-speed DCT. Very Lamborghini of you, Hyundai. It has a backup camera, and I thought it was factory. I'm pretty sure I just found out that that's the backup camera. I never did see anything pop up on the dash, and that might explain why. Let's see, we've got an active eco button here. Uh, OBD2 port that the cover's missing too down there. Uh, I'll take a quick look at the climate control. That's kind of cool. The switches are within each other there. Uh, turn this thing on. So this has the tech package, satellite radio. I just don't think it has nav. Long Veloster intro there. Here's our gauges, 128,000 miles and crazily it was still averaging 22.5 miles per gallon and these things will almost touch 40 when they're running correctly so that's pretty cool let's see if uh xm should actually work right now because xm is free right now look at that <laughs> awesome there's a big this is kind of an odd feature this huge veloster logo right there uh aux in a usb in what do we got in the console here of some jewelry Mirrors with no lights and the visor. Oh, look at that. Lights. I was wrong. All right, well, that's pretty cool. Nice of you, Hyundai. Uh, cruise control, ABS, traction control, Bluetooth. It's got some things in it. I mean, they're basically standard things at this point, but they exist. There's airbags basically all the way around you. And I need Thomas to clean the roof up on this bad boy. There's a lot of cleaning to be done here. There's some rear cup holders. I don't know. There's not. Not too much to go over on a Hyundai Veloster here. We'll open up the hatch. It's got its own wiper here and lots of glass. Back here we've got that cover for the OBD2 port. There's a door handle. Let's see, this guy sits up here typically. Something like that. You get the picture. It does actually go there. There's the back seats, front seats, check everything out. There's this, it's aftermarket backup camera and the center exhaust. The center exhaust is very cool. I love that about these things. I always thought it was a really cool car, even if it probably never sold as well as Hyundai wanted. And it has that third door. And there's only one of these. The car isn't symmetrical. There's not another door on the other side. That is a solid piece of structure and this is a door. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and you know, the best part is that it's all on the passenger side so the driver never has to move. Everybody has to come over here and get in so they don't disturb you when you're driving around. Uh, let's go ahead and hop under the hood here. Check out this 1.6 liter beast. Finally be able to see it in the light. You can see we've got an OEM battery the GDI engine stands for, I think, gasoline direct injection. And these cars were really like the beginning of everything becoming direct injected, which is great. I mean, obviously it atomizes the fuel better, it gives you way better economy, and uh, you can get a lot more power out of DI when you push it. That's your walk around of this 2012 Hyundai Veloster. I can't wait to get started on the engine and, uh, and call the hail guys and get this sorted out. And it's not nearly as bad as you think. It's just really dirty. It's had like cats or animals on it and there's just a lot of things that have, uh, a lot of dirt and a lot of little things that need fixed. And once we start putting the puzzle back together, I think this car will look amazing. Now let's listen to this engine and see what we think. Gabe thinks I made off like a bandit here because he's saying that this noise is just in the head. And it's, it really does kind of sound like a piston slap or a valve. Look at this. It's a valve that's sitting in the piston. It's just going plop, 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 yeah. plop, plop. There's nothing controlling. She's driven it so much like this that it, it must be something simple like a valve in one cylinder, honestly. Yeah. And uh, also we looked at the oil again and it wasn't milky this time. So that could have been condensation on the uh, dipstick before. Yeah. You, I don't want to do a head. I want to change the engine. <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. But in terms of, <laughs> you know, money and, and time. Yep. I agree. I mean. And look how easy it is to yeah. work on. Motor like mounts it's, just, are good. it's so easy to work on this car. And the motor mounts are good. Everything seems good. Yeah, see, if it were a busted 
rocks if they drummed a rod or something like that, you would never hear that. It would be so bad. We would not be able to hear that noise over the... You guys got to think about when a rod breaks and it's still on the crank, it's flinging around in the crankcase, just hitting everything, and it eats out all the borers and all that stuff. It's it's really nasty. And this has been running forever like this. I mean, she drove it across town. I drove it onto the trailer. We drove it off the trailer. It's idling right now. I guess what it comes down to is, if we can buy a turbo engine cheap and it just bolts up, we need to got to do a turbo swap. Because a DCT and a turbo is a straight up race car. There's no doubt. Even if it only makes 150 horsepower. <laughs> All right, well, let's pack this thing up for now. Get my brother's truck back to him. And uh, I'm gonna do some research and maybe we'll just pull the head off. Yeah, you, you gotta be close. Yeah. This is the $1,500 Hyundai Veloster project. We'll see how much it ends up costing. I'll slam it. Kaboom. Yeah, <laughs> you probably fixed all the hail just by slamming it. There you go. Oh man, look, I did. <laughs> it's all gone. <laughs> that is it for today, guys. Please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, and I will talk to you next time. Gabe wants to do the uh, financially smart thing and not put a turbo in it. I mean, <laughs> no, I, I don't want to replace the engine if it doesn't need to be replaced. Right, but right. I mean, yes, if a turbo is, you know. Yep. It's got to be done. Then it, it needs to be done. Has Absolutely. to be done. It would be a crime not to do it. It would be a crime not to do it. Uh, but I will say, when this came out with the turbo manual, I drove it and it was terrible. That's what I've heard. It was the worst one. Of, like the manual had no feel. The clutch had no feel. It wasn't fast. Everything about it was not good. So I wonder if the DCT is the fix for this car with the turbo. So do we need to do anything different with mapping or vacuum, oil, anything like that? I don't even know if it bolts up. Hmm. So I'm gonna go do some research and we're gonna find out. All right. Race car. Sounds like a plan.